and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's episode, we are going to check into step functions. Step functions are a really easy way to organize lambdas, and I will show you how to set up them and how to call them from an API gateway. So stay until the end of the video. If you're interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel and get notified when new videos are out. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. So what are step functions? Step functions have been out not for very long. They have been presented in 2016 reInvent. The idea of a step function is to organize lambdas. If you have been working with uh, lambdas already and serverless components like API gateways and dynamos and things like that, you realize that when you start doing your what before were microservices, you end up with four, five, ten lambdas and things happen in a weird manner. And sometimes you need to execute things in parallel and then grab them in the other side or you need to do things step by step. So one lambda needs to call another lambda or you need to have lambdas that are conditional. So if this one succeed, then execute this one. If not, then execute this one. And and then your architectures become very, very complicated because I think with serverless, the simplicity is in the code and the complexity is in the architecture. So step functions comes here to, to help you to draw your architectures and and being able to connect all these dots that you had before that you have to connect with other means like queues, SNS, streams and, and things like that. Now you can connect them with step functions. So that's the idea of step functions. They are organizing your lambdas in order to perform different things. So step functions, you can create them by the AWS console. It's a state machine, basically. So you have the first state, it can be a lambda, and then when it can be another lambda, and you can connect many lambdas together without the need of creating SNS, for example. So the idea of this video is I will show you how to do this, and I will also show you I will show you a very basic setup, like basic Hello World, and then I will show you how to call it from the API gateway because I was looking at the documentation and for me that was the hardest part. The how to do them is up to your imagination and your needs, but if you want another video about it, just let me know in the comments below and I can make a little bit more into step functions video. But for now, let's go to the code and let's check this out. We will create for this example just a basic project like using serverless framework we create the npm project and then we create the serverless project so very simple very straightforward as we have been doing. In there we just create the we will create this hello world function and we just return a hello world. It doesn't need to be an API gateway like proxy lambda it can be just a normal lambda as well it will work. After you deploy your function, we will go to the AWS console and we will start creating our step function. So basically our step function will just execute this hello world. As I said, if you're interested in more complex one, you can look at the documentation that I will link in the description box or in the blog post, or you can ping me and I can make a little bit more complicated video about this. So after it's deployed, we can go to the step function management console and remember that both the step functions and the lambda needs to be in the same region. The first thing we are going to do, there are some examples there. So when you go to the, to the step function, you can create a state machine. So the state machine is this diagram that I was mentioning before. And then there are some like examples, like blueprints you can, you can pick from, or then you can write your own. So there is hello world, wait state, that basically you're waiting for something to complete. Retry, if you want to try something multiple times. Parallel execution, that's pretty handy if you have, if you need this kind of organizing lambda that when multiple lambdas are executing, you want to collect the results and things like that. Then catch failure, that's for try, catch, and finally lambdas. And then choice state is when you have lambdas that are like conditional lambdas. So in this case, we are just going through the hello world. So we pick that template and then we can see there that there is the diagram, the preview of the diagram. It has a start, it has a hello world and it has an end. And on the bottom of that, there is the code. And that's kind of the definition of this state machine. So you can put some comment and you can 
also create which is the starting like node of your execution. In this case, it's Hello World, as there is only one. And then you can define the states. So in this case, we are a little bit modifying this, so we can use a lambda. We will change the type to a task, and that means that it will execute a lambda. And then we will change, the, we'll add the resource, and then we just put the ARN for the lambda we just created. And that's it, basically. So we create the state machine, and that will create a new role. And then we can try this. This is basically internally to AWS. If you need some inputs, you need to define them here in this new execution inputs box. In our case, we don't need any input for, for our Hello World to work. But if you need so, you need to define them here. If you want some example with lambdas passing inputs and outputs to each other, just let me know and I can create a video about that. So we just start the execution and this will basically try the whole flow. In this case, it's a super simple flow. It's just executing this lambda. So there we can see in the graph, we can see what is the status of each of the bits. So if it's blue, it will be in progress. If it's green, it's successful. And if it's red, it's failed. And the gray is canceled. So in our case, we have a green hello world. And then in the execution details, we can see that there is the execution status that is succeed. Also, in the, in the execution details, we have the mach state machine ARN and the execution ID that we will need that later for our lambda that will be triggering this using the API gateway. Then you can see the input that you type for your example for your execution. And the output in this case is just the status code is a response, so we can use something else also, just a normal lambda. Then on the bottom, you can see all the different steps that it's been triggered and when it's been triggered. And then if you open them, you can see more details. And then if you click the code, you can check what is the code that was run. As I said, one of the big challenges of the stack function is how to call them from outside. There are multiple ways. One way is that you can define an API gateway and call it directly to the stem function. But then basically the person that is calling that API gateway needs to know which is the particular step function you're calling, and that's not neat at all, because you need to leak information outside your system, and you don't want to do that. So another alternative is to have basically an API gateway, a lambda, and that lambda will call your stem function. So that lambda will have super minimal code, and I will show you how to do that. You will see how easy it is. We add one more layer there, but I think that helps a lot for the person that is the client or the system that is calling that API gateway because they just know the API gateway and it just works. So let's go for it. Now we want to create an API gateway that when it's called, it starts this whole process and it starts this execution machine. So for that, we will create another Lambda and we will call it need because as I always very original with the names and then we can create the lambda and we also want it to be attached to an API, an API gateway so we create a path and a method and we'll call it just init and the method will be get but you can use any method and now we go to the handler and we just create that that new lambda the tricky part here well it's not tricky it's just that we need to call this library from the AWS SDK it's called step functions and you will machine that that will allow us to execute this state machine. So basically this lambda will be executing the step machine. So we just create the step functions constant that is the library from the AWS SDK. And then we call that library in our lambda. That library takes some parameters when we want to execute a machine state. So it takes the machine state a R N that we will get from the AWS console, it will take an input and it will take a name. The input and the name are not mandatory. In our case, the input is empty and the name is execution lambda or something like that. It's not mandatory. I just grab the ARN and you will see in the following uh, minutes that that's the wrong ARN. So don't take the first one. I left some errors in this video, so you can see uh, what kind of errors you can make when 
creating this. So then you just done, uh, you just write a step function star execution. You pass the parameters, and then if there is an error or if succeeds, you just return different results. When this is run, it will just start executing all your lambdas inside the step function, and it will return a value. So we have a successful and and not successful state, basically depending on what errors this machine state, uh, the execution returns. It's very simple. And now I will deploy this and you will see that I will get some errors when I deploy this. But I wanted to leave them here because as I always try to code this um, and record it at the same time. It's, there is some addition but most of the time it's just the real pain. But I want to show a little bit of, of how to solve some of the typical errors that, or at least for me, the basic errors that appear when I was creating this. So we execute this in uh, our REST client and then we can see that there was an error and we get access denied. So that means that we just forgot to give permission in our serverless YAML to our Lambda to start an execution on this resource. So we need to add that and we add it like that. Now we deploy again. And we execute it again in our press client and we get another error, yay. The next error is that the ARN is invalid. And that's because we are using the ARN of the execution and not from the machine state. So that's pretty confusing, at least for me, in the, in the console. So there's two ARNs and one is machine and the other one is the execution. The execution is depending on the execution. And the one of the state machine is the one that you want, that is like only one state machine. So yeah, keep that in mind. Don't pick the wrong one. And then we change also the name that it needs to have like a slash. And then we deploy again. And then we get another error. And we can go and check the logs. And we can see that the input is wrong because it's kind of not parsing correctly. But as we said, we don't need it, so we can just remove it, as it's empty. And now we, when we will deploy, we will get the right, um, a successful result. And we can try it in our REST client, and that's the, the end of it. So basically, we, what we have done is to create um, a Lambda, deploy it, create a step function using that lambda, then create another lambda with an API gateway, deploy it, and create that new lambda to call the step functions that we just, that we just uh, created in the first step. So I hope this is good for you and you can find the code in GitHub as always and you can find more information in my blog post. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you do, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, suggestions, or if you want to see some more of these type of videos and you have some topics you would like to explore about step function, leave it in the comment box below. And also around here you can find more interesting links from my channel. And I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!